In this video, I want to talk to you about the most important terminology around Ethereum 2.0 Serenity upgrade. So you might be familiar with a few terms, um, but maybe other ones you just read about it, but you're not exactly sure what they mean. And that's why I wanna cover these terms in this video. My name's Kieran, really happy to have you here with me today. I create crypto and decentralized finance videos so that you are ready for the next bull run. So make sure that you hit that red subscribe button join the team and yeah, let's jump right into this. It's gonna be a relatively short video. I try and keep it simple and concise. So let's start with the beacon chain. So like a ring, it's one chain to rule them all and controls all the shards. It's a proof of stake chain. As you're aware, Ethereum is moving from proof of work to proof of stake. It includes beacon blocks. Um, it's a consensus layer for everything making sure that everything works and is aligned. It manages manages the different validators and uh, it um, gives and uh, gives the rewards and penalties and it applies these to the different validators. And it also serves as an anchor point for the shards through the cross links. So all the cross links of the shards come back and link towards the beacon chain. Now shards, it has been changed. There were supposed to be a lot more shards, but now it's 64. They're semi-independent chains. They include shard blocks and periodically the state of the shard block is recorded on the beacon chain through cross links. And um, time synchronization is not important for, for the shards. And as soon as a beacon chain is finalized, the shard blocks referenced in the included crosslinks are also considered finalized. I talk much more about shards in my previous video where I talk about um, a beacon chain being the heart of the whole Serenity upgrade. So make sure you check that out as I go much more in depth about what shards are, how they work, and also epochs. But I'll also talk a little bit about epochs here in this video. Now, crosslinks um, is a summary of the shards state. It's like um, telling all the information about the how, how it is, the transactions, and it only reference on of the shard in the beacon chain. So that's the only information. It's like um, you've got a file and you've got a, a, a shortcut and the, the cross link would be this, this, the line between the shortcut and the file. And maybe that is a good analogy. And also what is important is each shard will be linked um, with every block. A slot is 12 seconds long and it's a period of time in which a block proposer can add a block into a slot and 32 slots is an epoch. What is also important is a slot can be empty if a validator does not propose a block in time and the slots are all filled with different blocks and the committee um, votes on these blocks from the block proposer. An epoch is a number of uh, slots and it's currently at 32 and validators are reshuffled in uh, committees to make sure that each slot gets a block. Validator, um, if a user wants to become a validator, he has to deposit 32 Ethereum in the validator deposit contract and he also has to run a validator node. It's relatively simple. Um, I also made a video on that so you can check that out here. And the validators can be inactive, um, don't run as an actual validator yet, but active validating pending opted into becoming validated, but stuck in the entry queue and exit, exiting no longer um, able to validate and start, uh, stuck in the exit queue when you wanna get out of um, the beacon chain. Not possible in phase zero, but possible in other um, parts of the upgrade. But however, if a validator is inactive um, during um, when he's supposed to be active, well then he can receive a penalty, which is not good. Block proposer, this is a random validator. He's selected by the randall of the beacon chain and he will propose a block for a slot. And he also votes, there will be one block proposer per slot for the beacon chain and one proposer per slot for each shard chain. 
Attestation is another word for votes, and this is votes in regards to the validity of a shard or a beacon. Uh, committees, a committee is a maximum um, of 128 validators per committee, and it's a random group of validators who make sure they vote on the validity of blocks. So as soon as a block proposer adds a block to a slot, um, the committee um, votes and says that this block is actually a good block. Now, if two are BEF, <laughs> how you might call it. Well, um, I'm more familiar with the ETH2 abbreviation and that's for, it's the base currency of the beacon chain, basically the new Ethereum that's coming in. I prefer the ETH2 abbreviation, but um, you might also be familiar with beacon, cha um, beacon chain ETH, um, short as BEF, but I prefer ETH2. And yes, this can be obtained by depositing um, Ethereum through the deposit contract and you receive um, ETH2. So you have to deposit ETH1 and you get ETH2. Now the validated deposit contract and uh, from Ethereum 1, um, it's a smart contract on the proof of work chain and it allows ETH1 funds to be locked uh, and read by the beacon chain. And at the same time um, that these ETH1 uh, 32 Ethereum are locked in the chain, there will be 32 Ethereum 2 that are generated. And this, this mechanism might change depending on different updates. So, and onto phase two, um, there are, there's not the possible to transfer ETH2 back to ETH1. So it's a one way street. ETH1 goes to ETH2, but not the other way around. So you have to think quite hard if you want to become a validator because you might become a validator for a long time. Now for the Ethereum 2.0 phases, I've talked about these quite a while, but I'll go over them in a fly. Uh, the phase zero is the beacon chain. It manages the validators and all the stakes, organizing and electing committees and proposers. It applies the consensus rules and rewarding and pe penalizing and slashing. So it's like um, the heart of the whole operation. Phase one, shards, um, constructing the shard chains and blocks. Um, anchoring, cross-linking the shards and the beacon chain, which is very important so that the shards can communicate with the beacon chain and the ability to um, do ETH2 or BEF transfers between validators. This might happen sooner or later, uh, hopefully sooner. Um, I think Vitalik Buterin made a proposal on some kind of bridge between ETH2 and ETH1. Um, but yeah, we'll have to see about that. Then, uh, f uh, so phase one shards, well, that's, um, if you look at the human body, that would be the limbs. And phase two, the execution uh, environment, which is the last part, the brains of the whole operation, of the whole upgrade. Um, we've got the evasm, which is a virtual machine for execution of the different environments. And uh, so every shard has access to all the execution environments. This is very helpful for, for decentralized applications. And this will also allow different transactions to run on the whole network and also the ability to run and interact with smart contracts. So smart contracts is more or less the, the brains of the whole thing uh, of this system because it is a dumb system, but with the smart contracts, it becomes a very smart system and it will allow decentralized applications and the whole decentralized finance space to thrive on the whole um, Ethereum 2.0 blockchain. And it will also allow uh, cross shard communication. And this is very important because uh, the whole Ethereum 1.0 blockchain will be added as a shard into um, the Ethereum 2.0 blockchain and the phase two execution environment will allow hopefully um, the, the ETH1 blockchain to communicate with the beacon chain. So yeah, that, that was uh, the main terminology that you need to know to understand uh, different uh, Ethereum 2.0 concepts. I'll link the article down below. A big thanks to Alex from um, consensus for writing this article and yeah you can leave uh, your thanks down uh, on the article as well so hope you enjoyed this video hope you learned something new and i'll catch you very soon with another exciting video if you're enjoying these videos until now then i really appreciate a thumbs up a big thumbs up it helps out the channel trying to reach 1k subscribers soon so Every like, every feedback, every subscribe, uh, every subscription is a big help. So yeah, I'll catch you in the next video. Have a great one and talk to you soon. Bye-bye.